I'm not saying no to that. Yeah, if you hit us with some weird <laughs> we'll do some weird shit back. Welcome to Oddball. Amino Hassan, Charlotte Wilder from deep inside the Millennium Falcon, which means we're in New York City. Right there. I don't haven't even seen this movie. Uh, I'm in yeah. the I feel like I'm in a basement, but Amin says I'm in a state of the art spaceship. Yeah, you are. It's the fastest ship in all the galaxies. Well, and why does it look like a basement? It did the Kessel run in like 12 parsecs or whatever. But no, the point is. We are doing a show, and we got a bunch of stuff. Even though there were no games yesterday, Charlotte, guess yes. what? We got sh to talk we about. Have a, we have three pages of stuff. Three pages of stuff to talk you about. You guys believe That's that? Right. Also, hope everybody voted. And oh, not yes. for not for who's going to be an all-star. Sorry. Wow. Uh, yeah, the I, NBA didn't play games because they wanted people to vote. I thought you were going in a completely different direction. like, And not for you know who. Oh, and like, not for the bad guys. Oh, also, God. though, I hope you didn't vote for the bad guys. Ooh, fascism. Okay. <laughs> All right, we got, so we got workout Wednesday. So yes, we do. Fist ready, there you go. Uh, we'll do that a little bit later, but I want to start with a little potpourri. Oh. Like a little sprinkling of it, things that have happened. A little tripper on the league, if you will. Uh, why not? And let's start with a little segment called Who's Lying? Right? We've got four different people, four different statements. I need you to detect the liar out of all of them, right? Okay. Number one, you have P.J. Tucker saying, quote, I wasn't expecting to get traded, so I didn't know it kind of came out of nowhere. Number two, you got <laughs> Isaiah Thomas, the original Isaiah Thomas, the OG Zeke, saying about his beef with Michael Jordan, quote, this beef we supposedly had, well, I didn't know anything about it until the last dance. We've okay. got Dylan Brooks, <laughs> who said he, quote, cannot wait to lock up LeBron James. Okay. And then D, we have LeBron James, who spoke? Okay. Get it? Because <laughs> every time he talks, he lies. All right. All right. So uh, let me let me work through these yes, for a second. So yep. PJ Tucker said he didn't know he was going to be collateral damage when James Harden was traded from the Philadelphia 76ers to the Clippers. PJ was surprised that he yeah. was also sent to the Clippers. He says James's situation had nothing to do with me. As much as I get thrown in it, I'm kind of a casualty in that sense. Okay. First of all, PJ, you threw yourself into this when you skipped Embiid's wedding to party with James Harden and Bun B and Lil Baby and eat those burgers. Do not pull this on us. The burgers were good, though, man. Come on. They looked good. God. He's lying. He's, uh, PJ, you call him PJ Tucker. Well, let's go through the rest. Let's okay. go through the rest. Right. Okay, so. so we got Isaiah Thomas. Like I said, didn't know anything about the beef until the last dance. So are you telling me that this man is sitting there watching the last dance, watching his own interviews, being like, huh, I didn't know that Michael felt a certain way. Is that what he's insinuating? Pretty much. Do you now, remember? Now, mind you. <laughs> Isaiah Thomas was left off of Dream. It's like one of the most controversial basketball decisions ever. Yeah. The 1992 Dream Team, Isaiah Thomas was left off of it. And the last dance pretty much confirmed what a lot of speculation had been for years, which is got left off because Scotty and Mike didn't want him there. Hmm. Even though he was clearly, clearly, if you're going to assemble the greatest living basketball players, he was clearly, like, should have been front and center with that. Right. Um, but So he's saying he didn't know that it was because? No, he's saying he didn't know that there was beef until That's what he I mean. watched The Last Dance. So meaning like being left off of Dream Team, the whole thing, everyone getting angry about them walking off the court uh, in 1991, uh, all the little barbs and snippy yeah. things that have been said over the years, including like, man, I've been on shows with Scottie Pippen, and Scottie Pippen says some crazy stuff, and I'm like, Really? But like, <laughs> I get it. It's like they got beef. So. And so Isaiah's like, and I found out like, in 2020. Like Isaiah, and I, like, I work for Isaiah Thomas, man. Like it, he's, he's like helped me out with a lot of stuff. Like I'm not, same thing with P.J. Tucker. I, lo I love P.J. Tucker. Yeah. But like, however, I, how, however <laughs> right? Like the idea that Isaiah's like, hey, guys, let's gather around. Like there's this documentary coming out about Michael Jordan, the Bulls in the 90s, whatever. I'm in I'm it. I'm in it. Like they I interviewed me for like two hours. All right, let's see what they kept. Like, oh, okay, there it is. There's, there's my part where I talk about, like, da, da, da. Like, Michael, <laughs> how could you say such a thing? Where am I feeling this whole time? I thought we were cool. Okay, I'm going to hold off on judgment on both of these All guys. Right. Dylan Brooks. Dylan Brooks. <laughs> Dylan Brooks says he can't wait to lock <laughs> up. Did you see life. the clip? I did. He's standing by, like, like the bleachers the, yeah. of an arena. And this he's is like, after shoot around. And he's like, ready to lock him up. And 
it's like, well, <laughs> okay. We found out how it worked last time. You talked trash about LeBron James, I'm which is anybody. anybody. When did he? When did he ever? When has he ever talked trash and like it came to fruition? The only thing I can think is he was saying horrible things about America in the FIBA World Cup. Was he? No. Oh, okay. But like, if he were to oh, have, okay. <laughs> that's then he, what then it would have been. Worked. Right. That, yeah, yeah. That would have been the time, Dylan Brooks. Okay, LeBron James. He just said some stuff. Yeah, he spoke because you know ah, the joke is every right. time LeBron no, talks, I... he lies. LeBron <laughs> said, uh, "Okay, so first of all, he said that if he had never gone to the Heat, he would be just as dominant, hmm. maybe less rings." Which I thought was like, "Oh, that's that's a that is a what?" He said, "Maybe less rings. Won two rings in Miami. He said, maybe you went on two more rings or whatever." Okay. The other thing he said was, in response to the because the Lakers filed a, a petition that like, hey. A lot of messed up calls, whatever. Uh, the, the missed calls, excuse me, in the yes. Miami Heat Lakers game for Monday night, and the last two minute report comes out and it says it's all fine, it's all clean. Yeah. So LeBron tweets. He says, "If you play basketball, you know not everything happens in the last two minutes. There's stuff that happens in the first quarter, in the second quarter, in the third quarter, and the first ten minutes of the fourth <laughs> quarter." And I guffawed. The also, though, that he'd be like, he's he's not wrong. You're he's at, not lying. Stuff's you're, happening. You're looking in the wrong place. I know. <laughs> he also said that uh, that he would go. He went over to the refs while this was happening. Mm-hmm. He was like, one of them said it was fine. The other two said they didn't see it. So okay, so, so okay, a game so of who's, who's lying? Who's lying? Uh, instead of saying who's lying, I mean, uh. I'm gonna say the one person telling the truth mm-hmm. for sure. I'm not. Speculation. We're not I don't calling know. anyone liars. Not We're calling just anyone a liar. Your just, saying, said. just saying maybe there are some falsehoods being uttered. The one person telling the truth is Dylan Brooks. That man cannot wait what? to lock up LeBron James. Is he going to? Wow. What an upset. Probably not. Dylan Brooks is the one. <laughs> right? I mean, you know what? I kind of believe I can see it. Like the idea that like he legit got up in the morning and was like, can't wait for game time. Yeah, I'm gonna put him in cups. <laughs> and then like he'll score, and then LeBron will score forty five. He's like, that's right, he didn't get forty seven because Dylan Brooks is here. Lock it up, lock it, lock it. Dylan Brooks, not a liar. Okay, <laughs> moving right along. What's yeah. next in our potpourri? Uh, um, yeah. How do you feel about Nets Clippers based on Clippers Knicks, yeah. where the Knicks so, finally won at home and beat James Harden in his sure. return? And Mitchell Robinson at eight billion offensive rebounds. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say that. Clippers Knicks looked a lot like my turn, your turn. And this is what, what people always talk about sacrifice. Mm-hmm. This is what they think sacrifice is. It's like, guys, get on a basketball floor. Like, no, go right ahead. No, no, after you, I swear. Like, they're doing this to each other. Like, no, I've shot enough. You go ahead and have some tries now. Like, that's not sacrifice. Sacrifice right. is when I don't have the ball, am I doing things to help us win or am I just waiting right. for my turn to have the ball? Sacrifice is like, okay, I don't have the ball. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to set some off-ball screens. I'm going to, like, cut, live cut to draw some attention. I'm going to move around knowing that there's a good chance I won't get the ball, right? Just throw some back screens. I'm going to put a body on someone when the shot comes up, right, so that we, can, we have a chance to get a rebound. Maybe I'm not going to get the rebound, but somebody else will get the rebound as a re- result of my putting my body on someone else, right? On defense, I'm going to help. I'm going to talk. I'm going to die for loose balls. I'm going to, I'm going to again, crack back on uh like on the on the glass when we've got shots going up because if you are the Clippers and yep. you're saying hey I'm going to start Russell Westbrook I'm going to start James Harden I'm going to start Paul George I'm going to start Kawhi Leonard four perimeter players then and four guys by the way who've all have historically been good rebounders for their size mm-hmm. but this is a different story it's not like hey I'm a good rebounder and I've got these other bigs who are doing the dirty work it's like, right no, I've got to do the dirty work so they have to like it has to be a priority. Right. Like on the scouting report, we're like, hey, keep Jalen Brunson out the paint. Hey, uh, Julius Randle, force him to his right. And like one of the top three things should be Mitchell Robinson is going to attack the glass. And you might repeat it several times on the sheet. Yeah. Like, Mitchell Robinson on the glass. Someone get a body on him every single time. That's sacrifice because that's the stuff that really sucks and doesn't show up on a scouting report. It should be on a, a box score. Right. And that's something they got to deal with. So basically, they still have to play basketball when they don't have the ball. Yes, yes. It's not like, oh, well, uh, uh, I'm the star. I, like, no, I, Russ, please yeah. go ahead. James, have your turn. You're That's right. not how it works. Right, so right, right. Tonight they play the, the Nets. The Nets, they don't have a rebounder as devastating as Mitchell Robinson. He's one of the best offensive rebounders in the league. Mm-hmm. But 
They don't have a Mitchell Robinson level devastating rebounder, but they still got guys like Daylon Sharp. They got Nick Claxton. Yeah. Even Ben Simmons is an excellent rebounder. So it still has to be, and it's going to be every single night. Every team has at least one guy who gets busy on the glass. Clippers are going to have to worry about that every single night. Well, it'll be interesting for the Knicks to go from the oldest team of superstars in the NBA to the youngest with the baby Spurs tonight. Um, gosh, that's a difference. Yeah. That's a difference. Yeah, you look man. at you look at these guys out there, Russ and Harden and and Paul George and even Sean, Sean let me ask you something. Do you yeah. think we'll ever get tired of a Victor Wembanyama? No. You think every game like it feels like every time he plays, it's a big deal. If he I mean, keeps doing what he's doing, how can it not be a big deal? Because he's doing things that just like physically yeah. should not be possible. I won't get tired of that. I'll get tired of it if he doesn't have a big game and everyone's still like, look at this big game. Like, we got to say it as it is. So here's the crazy thing, right? Um, everyone got excited, and they should get excited. He's been a very exciting player, and obviously there's a lot of curiosity around him. Uh, Shaquille O'Neal made his season debut, like, I think this week in November of 1992. Okay. And, you know, in Shaquille O'Neal's very first week mm -hmm. in the NBA, mm -hmm. he was NBA Player of the Week. No way. Yes. Really? And this, and this is back before it was, like, the Eastern Conference. It was, like, just, there's just one NBA Player of the Week. Michael Jordan, Charles Barkley, all these people played, were alive and were very active and playing great. Shaq was Player of the Week his first week of the season. Um, and I'd say that to let everybody know. I'm not trying to put down Victor Wembanyama or whatever. I'm just saying, like, when we say, oh, my God, we've never seen anything like this before. Maybe we've never seen anyone that tall, that good. But I'm going to tell you right now. Mm -hmm. We have absolutely seen this amazing right out the gate very early. So what you're telling me is that in a few years, Wemby is going to be on NBA on TNT. Oh, wow. I, you know what? He's you're telling me you're telling me Wemby Young is about to be real funny he's real, as a broadcaster. Well, man, look, he's really good on TV. I mean, you know, you interviewed I know. him. Yeah. Uh, what is the Alamo? <laughs> the Alamo. Uh, that's your claim to fame. Yeah. You got your hands up. Yeah. I feel like you've got 10 fingers. Each finger might represent a single word, ladies and gentlemen, as we play a game called Word Count. Charlotte Wilder put them paws up. Paws up. There it is. <laughs> Ten fingers. And this is how we play word count. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It's a game where we each read a question to the other person, and they got to answer it in ten words or less, and we represent those ten words with our paws. And I sometimes have trouble counting, but I'm feeling confident today. Maybe. I feel like, yo, your math has been a little stronger lately. So. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's the nicest thing in ever said to me. Are you ready, Charlotte? Yes. All right. Question number one. Anthony Edwards and the Timberwolves handed your Boston Celtics their first loss of the season. Was it luck or legit, and how far can they go? Okay. Um, legit. Okay. Very far if they don't burn out. Okay. All right. Uh, well, Do you disagree? The, the judges are accepting the answer. You're going to have to like explain to me what very far is. Very far is making the playoffs for the there, Timberwolves there it is. in this situation. <laughs> there it is. It's so, all on the curve, ladies and it's gentlemen. It's all relative. <laughs> um, I think they can make the playoffs. I think, I mean, Anthony Edwards had 38 points. He's been playing incredibly good. Carl Anthony Towns was defending. Mm -hmm. Rudy Gobert is defending. I think they can make the playoffs, and to Goal. me, that's really, very far. Very far. It's true. It's <laughs> okay. Minnesota. Everything's on a curve. Are you ready? Right. Yes. All right. I mean. How should the NBA respond to the Lakers contacting the league office about missed foul calls against LeBron in their loss to the Miami Heat? Cackle, then say, wait, you're serious? <laughs> then cackle again. Do you think that's what they did? I'll tell you my personal experience. It was a game. It was us versus the Nuggets. Mm -hmm. And Grant Hill like with the score tied, gets the ball, rips and goes right past Dante Jones and drives to the basket. And it's going to be like a wide open layup. Dante Jones is beat. 
He literally sticks out his leg and no trips way. him soccer style. Grant Hill falls. There's no call. We go to overtime. We lose in overtime. And we're incensed. Like, oh, my God, how do you miss it? He literally sticks his leg out. We're in the portal, and we're going to... And we type it up and flag the play. This one, two minutes left in the fourth quarter. Da, 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 like, and we send it in. And we're like, that'll show them. And then Stu Jackson, who at the time was the, the czar mm-hmm. of, like, rules and regulations. He, he was a Joe Dumars of that day. He sends a response back. He says, after review, you guys are right. Dante Jones did trip Grant Hill. That should have been a foul. There should have been two free throws for Grant Hill. And, like, yes, you guys are right. We were, the refs missed it. So what happened? Nothing. <laughs> that is crazy. But it's like, but that's, that's like, so the Lakers, like, have fun. Right. Have a, oh, what about this in the third? Okay, oh, oops, we missed that one. Life goes on. All right, Charlotte, uh, question number two. Yeah. How should the media, the media and NBA beat writers feel about Jokic's post-game press conference after the Nuggets win over the Pelicans. Play the clip. Actually, I can just talk because I know what you're going to ask. I only need one hand. I only need mm-hmm. one finger. They should feel silly. Okay. All right. They should feel silly. Look, I, I feel like Jokic is, I think from all of his pressers over the years and, and last year during their finals run, it became very clear that this is a very smart person. This is a man who knows what's coming. He can anticipate what's going to happen well before it happens. And so he sits down and he's like, I know exactly what you guys are going to ask. And I'm going to do it for you. And I feel like this is a man whose bullshit meter is set at zero. He's like, I don't want to waste my time on things that I know are going to happen. And so I guess I would say on some level, maybe Jokic, you just have to like suck it up and go through the motions a little bit. Or the beat writers in Denver need to come up with some new questions because that man just really handed you yeah. your own butt, I would say. I okay, are you ready? Yes. What do you expect from Udonis Haslam as a new oh, VP man. of basketball development for the Miami Heat? Mm, okay, let's see here. Hardest working, best conditioned, most professional, unselfish, toughest, meanest, nastiest. That's, that's what they should, he is the living embodiment of heat culture, right? Like if they went in a lab this and said, this is what it means talking oh, about, yeah, if you there, don't know. I cheated, I read it off the court. screen. There you go, my secret is out there. Sorry. I don't know these things by heart. <laughs> but like he's the living embodiment of heat culture, right? Yes. Like if they were in a lab and tinkered and made this Frankenstein's monster of like, what is heat culture? It's Udonis Haslam. Um, so, He's been doing whatever it is they're asking him to do. He's been doing it. He's been a part of it. He's much. just wearing, been wearing the warm-ups. That's the difference. Well, I mean, well, yeah. Now he's wearing the suit in ter- instead of, you know, like you said, like warm-ups, right? I have a question about whether it will be as impactful. Here's the reason why. NBA players love listening to other NBA players. Mm-hmm. Good or bad, but it doesn't matter. They love listening to other players. The moment you switch into that guy... You're the same person, but the players look at you differently. Mm-hmm. They look at you like you're a suit. You're one of them. You're part of management, right? And so the openness and the willingness to receive very blunt communication, it dissipates. Yeah. Now, here's the crazy thing. After a while, it builds back up again, right? If you're a player who played like a zillion years ago, they're more willing to listen than a player who stopped playing recently and is now in management, mm-hmm. right? It's there's a it's weird the thing. It's the fresh newness of it, where it's, it's like I don't know. I it was like I like I remember when you were here, basically. Right. Right. So I, I'm curious, but then again, like Miami's a different place. People kind of march to a very specific to drum the, beat there. The so. drum of the of the heat of the culture. culture. Charlotte, yeah. question number three. Yes. What case can someone really make? that Steph Curry is not the greatest shooter of all time. And there's a stat that goes along with this because Steph Curry ran four three-pointers in the first quarter of their game uh, on Monday night. Mm -hmm. And Curry became the first player in NBA history to record four or more threes in each of the first eight games of the season. Well, I know how much you love small sample size theater. That ain't no small sample that's size. That's a big sample. That's 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 I mean, seventy you, years or you actually can't forty years of make people. that case. I don't think. 
but you know basketball history better than I do. So if there is someone that you can make the case about, I feel like you would be the person to do that. So gather around, kids. Oh, I've got a story for you. So in 2016, when Steph Curry was lighting the world on fire, mm -hmm. he was averaging 30 points a game on 50, 40, 90 shooting. No one ever, ever done it at that level of volume, ever. Clearly amazing. He was MVP the year before, and he somehow improved dramatically from year one to year two and became the first unanimous MVP in the history of the NBA. So during that season, this thing is happening. They're killing everybody. He's not even playing fourth quarters. That's how great he's playing, right? And Oscar Robertson was asked, is Steph Curry the greatest shooter of all time? And Oscar said something along the lines of, well, I don't know, I played with someone named Bucky Buckerson, and he was really good too. And I looked it up, and Bucky Buckerson, or whatever the guy's name was, it was a very, like, 1950s <laughs> ass name. There was no three-point line, obviously, right. back then, right? And the game was different, so, like, you can't really take field goal percentage for, you know, like, as a, the same a barometer way, yeah, because, yeah. you know, the shots were not valued the same way they are now. So free throw percentage is, like, the one constant. And this dude, I swear to God, he shot, like, 79% for the free throw line. I'm like, get the f*** out of here, bro. Oscar Robertson, what are you talking about? So I literally went on a, this. I still have the picture on my phone. Uh, it was, I went on Sports Nation, mm -hmm. and I'm sitting next to Max Kellerman, and Michelle Beadle asks me, she says, you know, hey, what do you have to say about Oscar Robertson? And I said, well, Oscar Robertson is one of the greatest players of all time. He's the founder of, like, pretty much of the Players Association. We owe him an immense debt of gratitude for everything he's done. Now sit the f*** down and shut the f*** up, because it's the dumbest thing you could possibly say. I don't know. I played with a pretty good shooter, and the guy was like just like an average ass shooter. Come on, man! You're gonna deny right. absolute brilliance. Imagine listening to Mozart and be like, "I don't know. My kid plays the piano pretty well too." So Steph's the greatest shooter of all time. Yes, that's yes. Would do. That. <laughs> all right, you got one more. All right. Uh, did Chris Paul really open Adam Silver's eyes? As to why the NBA All-Star Game lacked seriousness from players, and could you see Chris Paul as commissioner one day? Oh, my God. <gasps> that would be a lot. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> that would be, that would get, How many that would be conferences? exhausting. Oh, my God. Yeah, for everybody. For everybody. Every, like, league officials, teams, players. I was like, oh, yeah, the media I, I would get, be, like, it's like, now it's like, oh, you got to sit down with oh, Adam the, Silver. It would be like, Chris Paul will not stop calling me, asking to sit down with me. Yes, I can see him nagging the hell out of Adam. Yeah, for those who don't know, Adam Silver said that it was Chris Paul who was like, hey man, the introductions at the All-Star Game are too long. The halftime show is too long. If you want us to treat this as if yeah. it's a serious game, we need to be given our serious same rituals. Uh, you know what? I, and like, shout out to Adam Silver because he's calling their bluffs. Like, okay, cool. All right. Yeah, he's <laughs> like, uh, all right. You... all right, okay. We're shortening it. We're bringing it back. Now what? Like, ah, and all the players who love like coasting. Yeah. Like, Chris, like, what, it's what, like what it's like doing? telling the teacher they didn't give you homework. Yeah, exactly. Like, Chris is like, like uh, Mr. Silver, actually, I believe you said you were going to assign us a math worksheet. I don't think you did. And everyone's like, God damn it. That's exactly who he is. I think that's going to do it for word count. Ooh, 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 wait, wait, wait. I know it's not a hype me up day, but I think we need an emergency hype me up. For? Robert Williams, oh. who needs to have surgery on his right knee. Yeah. Can I give him a little pep talk? Yeah, yeah. How about it? Time Lord. Ugh, this sucks, man. I'm so sorry. But think about it. You had surgery on your left knee last season. You're going to have surgery on your right knee. You're going to have two knees that are stronger than they were when you started out. These knees are going to be bionic. The, technology now is crazy. You're going to have, like, steel knees. It's going to be great. You got through the first one. I know that you will get through this. I believe in you. I'm so sorry, though. I, she's really good at this. What could I say? Charlotte's good at being, like, very positive and uplifting. Thank you so much. To tell him that he's going to have better knees. He is. He he's going to have better knees. Have you talked to – do you know anyone in your life who's had a knee replacement and they're like, oh, I feel like a new person? Well – I mean, I that, know this isn't a they, knee replacement. They go double teapot on it? Usually. Or, you know, okay. Usually. Uh, do you yeah. think Mason Plumley needs to hype me up after he sprained his MCL when Julius Randle fell into him? Look at the bright side. It's not worse. It's just a sprain. You'll be out for a couple weeks. You'll be back. You'll be fine. And they need you. That's the thing. Like, the Clippers need size. Like, that's the one, one of the guys that they cannot afford to lose because they're just so light 
on size outside of Ibiza Zubat. So get well, Mason. Bright lights, I'm gonna set my soul, I'm gonna set my soul on fire. Yeah.